Sometimes the best and quickest way to figure out what people know or how they think about a certain topic is to simply ask them. And this is typically done in two ways, interviews and surveys. Interviews are used to collect in-depth data. They're typically done one-on-one. -on -one, and they are usually conducted by a researcher who has been trained in interview techniques. So interviews can be guided or they can be unguided. Guided interviews are cases where the interviewer asks the interviewee a predetermined set of questions. Unguided interviews are cases where the interviewer asks questions based on the previous responses of the interviewee. And of course, an interview can be both guided and unguided at the same time. Surveys, which are also known as questionnaires, are useful when you want to collect a lot of different information from a lot of different people. And they typically present a standard and predetermined set of questions to people. Like interviews, surveys can also be one-on-one, -on -one, and these would be cases when maybe the researcher is sitting down with a participant and directly asking them questions. However, surveys can also be done on paper or even online. Let me, let me note that here. And while typically people need to be trained on how to do interviewing techniques, it's pretty easy to give surveys and doesn't really require a lot of training. Typically, the hardest part of giving surveys is learning how to approach people to ask if they want to participate in the survey, rather than giving the survey itself. But the hardest part of surveys is actually figuring out what to ask and how to ask it in order to get the information that you're looking for. So they're pretty straightforward to conduct, but they need to be written with care. For example, one thing that researchers or survey writers need to pay attention to is how items on their survey are worded. So if I asked you on a survey, do you believe in aliens from outer space? You might say no. But if I ask you whether you believe that there might be life somewhere else in the universe, you might have a different answer. And these are called wording effects. Because even really subtle changes in wording on a survey can have a really big impact. Think about differences in asking about welfare versus aid to the needy or Obamacare versus the Affordable Care Act. We really need to be careful with the language that we use. Another problem with surveys is that you can actually be pretty limited in what you're able to study. And that's because people might not be fully aware of why they do the things they do. After all, you can ask people about things that might be unconscious or otherwise outside of their conscious awareness. Also, if the survey is asking someone about their behaviors or thoughts or habits, People tend to paint a pretty rosy picture of themselves, even if the survey is completely anonymous. Someone might hold unconscious or even conscious racial biases, but they might not be willing to admit that they hold racist attitudes on an anonymous survey, even if their name isn't on it. So just like interviews can be guided or unguided, surveys can either be structured, or they can be unstructured. On an unstructured survey, you might ask open-ended questions. Maybe something like, how satisfied are you with your current relationship? And while the open-endedness of the question might allow people to give really interesting and honest responses, those responses might be really hard to separate and put into different coding categories, which would make it really hard for you as the researcher to run st any statistical tests on them or draw any conclusions from them. Structured surveys use closed questions. And these are questions where there are a selection of answers to choose from. Maybe you would ask the same question, how satisfied are you with your relationship? But you would give them a scale of one to five, with five being the most satisfied and one being the least satisfied. And because of this, you're able to add a quantitative measure for a somewhat qualitative question. However, by doing this, you might be missing out on the really interesting answers that participants may have given in an open-ended survey. 